Hi, TikTok. <laughs> I feel like TikTok doesn't really know me yet since I'm kind of new here. I just thought I would sort of get ready and introduce myself and talk a little bit about who I am and what I like to do and maybe like get to know, we can get to know each other a little bit more. We can be friends, you and I. I'm meeting my husband for dinner, so I just thought I would kind of get ready and chat a little bit. I am a fashion model and I've been modeling since I was 14 years old. I'm 27, so you do the math. The thing I'm probably the most known for is Victoria's Secret. I started doing Victoria's Secret when I was 17 years old. I used to shoot for Pink, which is sort of their younger college kind of sweatpants, pajamas. I was modeling and doing a lot of stuff before that. I worked a lot with H&M. They were a main client of mine. I worked a lot with Forever 21 and I did some commercial work and I did show seasons from the age of 16 and I used to walk a lot of shows when I was younger. I think I started walking the most shows probably by the time I turned 18 years old just because I was so young and I think I looked really young. It took a while for people to feel comfortable booking me and putting me in shows because, you know, when you look like a baby, <laughs> they're a little more skeptical. Although it's not uncommon for young girls to be in shows, or it wasn't when I first started. I turned 18, I walked for so many amazing designers. I did Versace, Chanel, McQueen, you name it. Now I can't really remember because that was almost 10 years ago. <laughs> when I was 18, I also tried out for the Victoria's Secret fashion show for the first time, and I booked the show, and I walked the show, and I think my first show was 2014, and I walked in the pink section. It was really fun. It was pretty much a life changer, because back then when you did Victoria's Secret, it was such a big deal, and you would get so much exposure. Instagram was relatively new. I got Instagram when I was 16 years old and I didn't really know what it would become or what it would be like but before I did Victoria's Secret I probably had a couple hundred thousand followers just from you know being a model doing my thing. I was sort of recognized in terms of fashion in the fashion world and then I did Victoria's Secret and I went from like a couple hundred thousand to a couple million and then so on and so forth and then I became a Victoria's Secret angel and I you know had this amazing career with Victoria's Secret and they kind of catapulted me from fashion and modeling in that sense to just like on covers of magazines and I d did a lot of editorials but I was never on like the cover of Vogue and then I did Vogue covers and it was really cool. So Victoria's Secret definitely did all of that for me which I'm forever grateful to them for doing that and for believing in me and I do still work with the brand, I shoot with them still to this day, and I just did the Victoria's Secret World Tour show that they filmed, so I'm, you know, keep your eyes peeled, I'm, I'm walking around in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I've had a really long, incredible relationship with uh, Victoria's Secret, so that's kind of, if you see me and you're like, oh, she looks familiar, that's probably where you've seen me before. I kind of want to talk about my dog Tate because you might hear me talk about him a lot. He's basically my entire personality. <laughs> Honestly, like I'm obsessed with my dog Tate. He was a miniature Labradoodle. I got him when I was 18 years old and he was with me for nine years. And in June of this year, I got married. And a week before my wedding, I was in the hospital with Tate. He was in the ICU because he had been diagnosed with lymphoma which is a form of cancer. And he had what's called T-cell lymphoma, which is a very aggressive form of cancer. And unfortunately, Tate passed away um, a couple of weeks after my wedding. He was an amazing dog and I love him so much. It's so amazing that he pulled through and we got him out of the ICU and I managed to get him from New York to Colorado to be at my wedding, which meant the world to me. I might talk about him a lot because he meant so much to me. He was really my best friend and he was more than a dog to me. He was a soulmate. I think if you've ever had a dog before where you connected with 
with them like that you kind of know what i'm saying it's just it's it's a different kind of relationship um it's hard to explain <laughs> i feel like sometimes i i'm a lot at a loss for words trying to explain how much i love tate because i think that there are no words he was a really sweet funny silly boy i'll post videos of him so you guys can see him and maybe you get to know him and his little personality he's a cute little boy being able to spend the month that i got to spend with him post diagnosis was really really special to me i think i'll probably miss him forever for the rest of my life i think he could tell if i was feeling you know certain emotions i think all dogs can do that i think cats can do that i'm probably going to talk a lot about him so i just wanted to give you a little background on my sweet baby boy my angel baby tate you, if you know me you know you know Tate, you know, you know. <laughs> I went down to Georgia and I saw all these dogs and I met all these dogs and it was like a dream. I was just playing with all of them and hanging out with them and, you know, saying what's up and just, you know, shaking hands or shaking paws. While I was there, I just, I saw this dog, this all black German Shepherd. He was probably about seven months old. And for some reason, I was very, very drawn to him. I just thought he was one of the cutest things I'd ever seen in my life. And I just wanted to play with him. Let me sort of have some alone time with him. And I kind of just hung out with him. And I left Georgia and couldn't stop thinking about him. Kept talking about him. So literally obsessing over this dog. And I was like, what am I doing? Tate just passed away. The last thing I need right now is a 60 pound German Shepherd puppy that I just like, it on a whim. <laughs> I kind of just took a minute and thought about it and then my husband and I decided that we would actually love to try to foster him. We weren't really sure if we were ready for the commitment of adopting a dog quite yet. So we did that, we fostered him and of course <laughs> foster failed as most people do <laughs> and ended up adopting him. He's such a great dog to be honest i don't think i've ever met a german shepherd like him ever he is so silly and his personality is really quirky and he's really funny and he's just really like he's just a really sweet sweet dog my mom calls him gentle giant and that's exactly what he is he is just this giant dog that is so gentle and so sweet i called him salem and the reason I call him Salem is because when I was a kid, I used to be obsessed with this TV show called Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And in the show, she had a black cat called Salem. And when I first saw Salem in the shelter, I thought, oh my God, he looks like a black cat. He's got that long, like flowing, swishy tail and these cat ears, these just giant, pointy, adorable cat ears even his personality he's very cat-like that's why i call him salem keep your eyes peeled for my gorgeous black cat salem who's not a cat but a german shepherd i also very recently decided to chop all my hair off which upset a lot of people on the internet <laughs> which is totally fine you know you can 100 percent think that it doesn't look good you can have your opinion it's totally fine. Hair is hair and it'll grow back. Don't worry, it'll all come back. I was really ready for a huge, huge change. Just felt like, okay, let's do something different. Let's, let's try something that we've always wanted to try and maybe never had the courage. And I finally decided to cut my hair off like I've always wanted to do. And I wasn't nervous, which I think is a really good sign. And I really trusted the person who initially cut my hair and then a few days ago i was on set and i was with this amazing hairdresser called ward he is really cool he done my hair a bunch before for a couple of vogue covers one of my favorite vogue covers is the vogue mexico cover where i have short hair and it's kind of curly and it looks a little like elizabeth taylor sophia loren kind of vibe and he did my hair for that cover and I just shot with him again and we were on set and we were just chatting and he was like you know you should try you should try the Linda Evangelista like the Linda haircut and I was like you know what why not just give it a go we're halfway there we cut it all off anyway what could go wrong let's just cut it some more Ward of course cut my hair 
and gave me like a little bit more of like a Linda haircut. So it's like a little shorter on the side and it's really short in the back. The first time I cut it, I was ready for it. So that was a bit unexpected. I still really like it. It looks really good. He's an amazing hairdresser. So obviously I think that this haircut is like insane. And I'm excited to see how it kind of grows out a little bit more because I have pretty curly hair and I was loving my other cut for, you know, my, my curly hair and like the front and sides were like all curly and I thought it was really cute. So I can't wait to see kind of what this does as it grows out a bit more. I feel like I'm the most myself when I have curly hair. I've been shooting since I was 14 years old, you know, and mostly with the same haircut for most of that time. And there's only so much you can do with all that long hair. I'm a pretty shy person uh, making these videos. And it's not my favorite thing to do in the world. I do get kind of nervous doing them and I don't really know what I'm saying or what I'm doing. Hopefully I warm up, you know, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. I love to snowboard. I've been snowboarding since I was like eight years old. It's one of my favorite sports to watch, to do. I was a gymnast from the age of like nine or 10, maybe younger. And I did that for a really long time. No, I was not good at it. But yes, I did love it. I was way too tall. Like, what was I thinking doing gymnastics? Like, I'm nearly six feet tall. Obviously, when I was younger, I wasn't so tall. I was like maybe max five, six. And then once I quit, I had a crazy growth spurt. But even at five, six, I was ginormous. Obviously, I was so tall. I feel like it gave me the work ethic that I have. I don't know how to explain it or even if there's much of a connection that makes sense between the two. It was, there was a lot of discipline in gymnastics, and I think the fact that I had structure and discipline from a really young age and striving to always be better made me want to strive to always be better in a lot of areas of my life, including my career. I don't do like so many shows anymore. When you're really young and new and you're what's called a new face, you walk a lot of shows and then as you get a bit older and you know, you've been around for a bit, new girls come in, but that's okay. You gotta give the new kids their time to shine. So I'm fine with that but I still love everybody that I work for and I love all the amazing brands that I've gotten to walk for. Sometimes you get to come back and they, they ask for you back every once in a while. I saw that Christy Turlington recently walked for Ralph Lauren, which is amazing. If there are things that you would like to know about, feel free to ask. I feel like it's always hard to talk about yourself and what people find interesting. I would love to know what you find interesting or if you want to know me at all. Maybe I, maybe I just zip and, you know, never say anything ever again. Oh, anyway, nice chat. Uh, talk to you later. Bye.